Hello. I'm so sorry about being late. Um, I, I've, I've done what I'm really good at, which basically is um, get really energized by the last minute rush. So I'm getting a little bit too cocky, um, I think, because things haven't gone too wrong recently, um, except you're probably going to tell me in a minute that you can't hear me or you can't see me. Oh, and I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually I'm so hearing myself here now. I'm just going to turn myself down, <laughs> otherwise you hear an echo. So, um, so I've, I, I just basically had all these last minute thoughts that um, needed attending to, all to do with the stream, of course. So um, I've got a little, um, a little flower vase of, um, harvest mice here these 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 are the ones that we'll be making today and um, those of you who are felting along I hope you've got all your stuff ready and um, I will be um, today I will actually be unpacking our kit and this is what you would be receiving if you um, bought the harvest mouse kit from us and it makes two harvest mice so if you've got the kit you can make one with me now and then maybe another one um, later on by yourself because you do need to they need to have a friend it's um yeah definitely necessary for that so um and one of the reasons why i was late is because i really wanted to do some um harvest mice facts and i had i'd forgotten about this and i had to just quickly look it look it up but in the meantime i also know there's lots of you there so lots of chatting going on so i'm going to start at the top and work my way down to say hello to as many as i can um, hi Pamela signing in early and then I, I, I let you wait as well so I, I'm, I'm so sorry because you're watching all the way from um, Oregon in the United States and um, it must be very early morning but um, you're sitting with a cuppa in Silverton well welcome to you hi Diane I have only got your luxury fluffy pipe cleaners can I use instead please got most of this the um, most the other ingredients I think you get away with um, with a fluffy pipe, pipe cleaner um, Pokey Doodle Crafts. Pokey or Pookie? Not sure. Enjoying some shade here in the UK. Oh, nice. Are you outside? I wish I was outside. I have to say. Alicia, sitting here in Bristol, England. This is my first class with this group. Hi, Alicia. Welcome. You're not too far away from us. Um, and um, and I, I apologize if I say this wrong, but I want to say Pokey, but it's spelled Pookie Doodle Crafts. And mine too, but I'm just a spectator. Don't have the ingredients yet. Only just discovered needle felting. Oh, how exciting. Um, hi, Chandra. Hello, I'm here today. Feel like I've missed a million episodes. You have? I've missed you too. Where have you been hiding? Have you been poking and prodding people? Probably. Um, but um, all for a good uh, reason, of course. So uh, nice to see you here. Um, welcome to all new new people. That's Chandra saying that. I only spectate and interject with silly comments. <laughs> we love your comments, Chandra. You can do this anytime. Um, does the video stay up to come back to later? Do you know? Yes, I know. The video does stay up. It stays forever on YouTube unless we take it down. So if you want to um, catch up um, on it or... Um, um, play it later where you can stop and fast forward, forward and get rid of my silly comments or something like that. You can do all of that. Um, I will need a lot of time. Oh, no, you'll be fine. I'm going quite slow. Take as long as you want. Thank you, Chandra. You've taken the words out of my mouth. Um, that's me saying running a couple of minutes late. Um, Emma is here today. Excellent. Um, Steffi on her way very shortly. I'm here now. Faith, hi Faith, hi Emma, um, and all, I hope you're all well today. Yes, we're all really well, um, and um, I hope you're well too. Um, are you sure that it's you? Are you sure that it's you? Um, are you asking me, Chandra? Am I sure it's me? Okay. Hi, Pamela. Pokey Doodle Crafts, or maybe Pookie? I don't know. And uh, lovely to see Chandra back today. And uh, that's Emma saying hi Faith. That's also Emma saying hello everyone. Donna, uh, that's Donna has just joined. Um, Karen is there. Hi Karen. Um, I'm so happy to be here in my car today. <laughs> yeah, not just any car, Chandra. We all know you have a very nice car. Well, I know you have a very nice car. Um, um, so Emma is welcoming Alicia. Um, thanks. I'm a bit nervous. Haven't done one um, of yours before. Hope I can keep up. I promise you, um, I'm trying to go as slowly as I can um, without going too slowly so that people um, get um, um, maybe bored, fall asleep, um, switch off, run away, 
never watch again um, and um, so you it, it's all very clear and that's probably what people will tell you too um, hi is Chandra there we're friends now yes Chandra is there Diane just commented wait just above you um, hi Yana nice to see you you've remembered today excellent um, Okay, so um, Emma is saying, I will be checking in here with help as Steffi is demoing, but I think I will limit the number of links I share to reduce the clogging up the chat. Okay, so please look at the video description for loads of links for materials on our website. Thank you, Emma. That's that's very useful. I'm always clogging up the chat. <laughs> no, Chandra, you don't. You're meant to chat. It's us clogging up the chat by uh, thinking, oh, we can, we can help people with this. We can help people with this. Um, Alicia, the uh, video will stay on your channel to be watched later as much as you like, so take it easy. It is hard to craft along anyway with all Steffi's banter. Thanks, Emma. It's, it's perfect breaks to get to the next stage while I'm talking a lot of nonsense. Um, hi, Laura. Your second show, Love the Gnome Lesson. Oh, excellent. Did you um, watch the um, Easy Gnome um, over at um, Creative Craft or did you watch it on our YouTube channel? Um, mentioning Creative Craft, I'll be there tomorrow evening at um, 7 p.m. And if you're watching this video anytime later, don't take any notice of, of me what I've just said because obviously that won't be the case. But if, you, if you're watching this live tomorrow evening at 7 p.m., I will be over at Creative Craft and I will be making cheeky mice. And I, I have got um, such cool ideas for these. Um, not entirely all my ideas, but I've got some of my own ideas which I haven't shared with anybody yet. So um, we're making one of these and I've got extra surprises up my sleeve as well. So I um, hope you um, tune um, in. And that's a Facebook stream, so you do need to use um, Facebook for that one. Um, Donna says, everyone's banter is great. It adds to the fun. Absolutely. Um, okay, everybody can hear me. We can hear you. Um, good morning. Um, I've already said hello, Pamela. And um, Pamela says, good morning, Steffi. Hello, everyone. Um, that's another Diane. Karen, Alicia, don't panic if you get behind. Steffi has little breaks to tell us about products and things she's been doing so you get a chance to catch up. That's it. Thank you. That sounds much more professional than just saying, talking a lot of nonsense and banter. Um, that's um, well put, Karen. Hi, Laura, um, Jana, Pauline, Karen and Diane. That's Emma welcoming people. Um, Steve, Steve, um, those mice are gorgeous. Thank you. Um, everybody's saying hello to each other. Alex says hi. It's her birthday, so we are felting along together. Alex, happy birthday. Do I have to sing now? Do I? All right, just, just very quickly. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alex. Happy birthday to you. Okay, not everybody is going to get a birthday song to send your birthdays in. <laughs> oh. Poo. Pauki. Pauki? Is that how you pronounce it? Okay, I can't even read phonetics, phonetic spelling. Um, oh, Dan, Donna says, missed you, Chandra. Um, I have to just apologize for pokey, pookie. Pauki. Now I've got a third option how to pronounce it. If only you could talk to me. Um, maybe you give us your first name and then I know forever that I, that's you. Um, hi, Pauline. I have missed you as well. Um, Pauline, I don't think you've been with us for a little while. Um, or maybe you're just a silent watcher, which is fine. Um, oh, you just cut your hubby's hair face. He's now threatening to shave it all off. Oh, my goodness. Um, yes, that's, um, that's um, quite funny, actually. Um, yeah, I, I told you already the, the shaved off hair story from um, of my husband and I absolutely hate it, so say no more. Um, oh, and you came from Creative Craft. Lovely, Laura. He just told me to stick to needle fanning. <laughs> I'm trying to cut my son's hair, but he's. Um, I tried to use the trick that I use on my own hair and he saw me, um, which is basically I twist the hair and then I just cut off the end um, here. And um, and I, I started doing it with his and he just went, Mom, I've never seen any hairdresser do this. I thought you knew what you're doing. I said, I never claimed to be a hairdresser, but I do know how to cut hair and it'll be fine. He's got very curly hair, so a bit of like chopping in a bit more on one side or the other. You're not going to um, be able to see, but he's um, a very, very vain teenager and he will not let me touch his hair, even though I cut one hole and he just walked away and he said, no, it's fine. I'll just wait until the end of lockdown. 
so which I think is hilarious. Um, that suits is fine. He, it's his his head and his hair. Um, your banter and nonsense are delightful and keep me setting my alarm to get up for an early morning visit. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you, Pamela. Oh, you've made my day. Um, no, I meant you are hilarious and funny so people could stop themselves <laughs> laughing so much. Okay, don't do that. Don't laugh and, um, and stop. Um, have a great birthday, Alex. Of course, everybody's happy saying happy birthday. Um, she's laughing. Well, uh, any, everybody can uh, laugh at my singing. Um, and Alicia says, I cut, I just cut my own. Um, that was scary. And Pamela, um, as the last comment, and then I start uh, using your kits for these, these live feeds is brilliant. Excellent. Let's that was a good last comment because it mentioned kits, and here it is. So, if you are the happy recipient of one of our kits, it usually comes like this got a big sticker at the front it always tells you how many it makes so on here it says makes two harvest mice and then um, the British flag indicates that all of this has been packed um, in the UK and um, one thing that I didn't bring with me is um, ooh, I don't know if, if um, that's a shame really that I didn't bring it with me you haven't got a clue what I'm talking about but we now put um, our uh, basic wool mats into the kit and I don't know Emma if you can just shout out to somebody to bring one of those uh, little square um, basic wool mats down so that I can show what what comes in our kits now this one here was packed before we had those wool mats and so you see the contents on the back of the kit here you get um, a foam mat in in there the great thing about this is you get our beeswax balm in there as well so and then um, it's usually tied with a string like this this is a very special way of tying it which um, takes ages for people to learn but um, it's well worth it and it's a natural string so it's um it's made from hemp and guess what it's in rainbow colors so if you uh, find a, a use for this um, we should ask people what they're actually using it for because I'm sure you can't just chuck that in the bin it's just too nice to do that it's super strong um, you can tie a present up or well, I don't know you could use it even for beading and for necklace anything like that it's a really really strong um, um, thread and it's a natural material it's made from hemp and then let's open this kit up and I'm just gonna go a little bit closer so you can see what's inside so there we go open the lid and um, these boxes are sturdy um, um, craft um, car carton box so you can reuse these as well um, you don't you don't break them by getting into them and then you get your instructions in there and uh, we usually give you a little uh, basic needle felting guide so if you're brand new to needle felting or even if you are already a seasoned needle felter there might be something on there that you haven't seen before so this should be in in each of your kits and it covers things like the types of wool the different tools that you can use how to use the felting needle um, 2d flat surface uh, details how to do that and then um, it's got um, the the shaping with wool making this the um, the shapes wire armature how to do that and um, and then accessories that we sell and oh there comes my basic wool match oh so, uh, come, come and say, say hello quickly oh hang on I just need to go big because I've got a, a little surprise here for you <laughs> She's alive! <laughs> she does actually exist! Chandra is on there today. Hi Chandra! And um, Emma is there and um, Diane is there and Pauline is there. Oh, and, um, uh, Hello, lots of, lots of um, people and Pamela from Oregon is on there as well. She sets oh, the alarm at 6 o'clock oh in the morning. Goodness. Good morning Pamela! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thank you oh, for that. Nice to see you. <laughs> oh, no, not going to do that. Right, um, so this is the, this is the uh, basic um, wool mat that you get in our um, new packed kits and that makes our kits plastic free yes we're so proud of that anyway going back to this one I'm just going to go a little bit um, closer again so instead of getting this one um, we're in the transition phase so some of you will still get this and, and some won't um, and then we've got our felting needles in a paper bag. Again, we're keeping um, away from plastic. And we, um, at the beginning of this year, we have started using glassine bags. Um, I don't know if you um, remember, I remember these from my childhood when uh, my grandfather used to collect um, stamps and um, coins. And they, they, that, that's the sort of thing that they go in. But they're also paper, so they're recyclable. 
and um, and then you get um, oh yeah what you get in there are the eyes so we will we'll, we will be opening this later because I'm using this kit to make the mouse and then you also get um, your, your beeswax balm here it's in a heart shape and that's really useful to have that in a heart shape and um, your ma your mouse color your main mouse color here and then you get um, the extra bits of wool and um, these are all wool butts what we use um, mostly and you need one wire that makes two mice so there you are that's it um, this is a cotton covered um, steel wire and um, the gauge is I've actually got some here if you want to buy just the wires and make lots of mice the gauge is a um, is a 22 um, there you go you can see it there 22 and we do sell these um, online as well and you get quite a lot in there uh, as in 25 pieces right so that's um, the unpacking of the kit done now so first thing obviously you will be um, opening up your uh, instructions and um, you can always see on the first page we indicate the um, I nearly said the severity of the kit um, that's not the word I wanted to use it's um, how easy or difficult it is and this one is is a crafty beginner so it's not it, it's okay for um, a beginner as long as you as long as you've got nimble fingers and um, you're you, you're not completely feeling insecure crafting then you'll be fine um, and it made the mouse is about um, five to six um, centimeters oh I'm just looking at, at my um, harvest mice facts and they're actually um, five to seven mi um, centimeters in real life and the techniques um, used are wrapping wire shaping adding features shapes and details and you get um, the, the materials at the front will tell you what you need to make one mouse on there so um, you also need some glue and then we start at the beginning um, and we always tell you um, that if you're if you're um, starting your project take a pinch of the wool to one side so don't use suddenly everything and then you need a little bit more um, later so before you start take a pinch of each color wool and put aside for finishing touches take 18 centimeter of the wire and a wisp of flesh pink wool and wrap wispy ends tightly around one end of the wire keeping the wool flat like a ribbon now the reason why you take 18 centimeter is because the wire is actually 36 centimeter long so that um, makes exactly half so if you um, if you don't don't have a ruler however we do all of our kits now I've got this one doesn't Emma! all of our kits have got rulers on the side um, I, I was going to say but this one um, is, is a transition one it's a transition one um, it will have in the future right so I'm, I'm absolutely terrible cutting wire with um, scissors so I'm trying to find my wire cutters but I don't think they're here so I'm going to um, going to pretend I'm cutting this with wire cutters there no scissors have been used maybe there you go so I've got my um, my two lengths and I only need one to make the mouse so I'm going to put and I'm not even going to use this um, plastic foam mat I'm going to tidy my desk up a bit because I'm terrible at doing that there we are so I've got my wool put all of this away be, be need for a change and then I've got my felting needles here I'm actually not going to open this but you get three medium felting needles in there and um, and then I save my, the eyes and the and the beeswax balm for later and I'm going to go small in a minute again and I will actually use um, this basic wool mat and the, the, the way to use it it has got a hessian um, one side is hessian and you put this you sandwich the hessian between the two mats and then you can use it just like that so I will be following my own instructions here and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a, a little so I, I'm following my own advice as well I'm just putting a little bit of each wool um, to one side just a pinch in case I need that later and a little bit more of this because that's a larger quantity so I've got little bits here um, put aside for later and um, that is if you're making two mice and you you for, for whatever reason you've used up all your wool you know you've got a little bit in the reserve there so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make um, the dormouse's dormouse's no we're not doing even dormouse the harvest mouse's um, nose talking about dormice it must have been in my head because there we have got a kid that makes two cute dormice and I think they've recently been on the news the dormice that they are um, 
yeah they're just about out and about at the moment so if you spot one lucky you i've never seen one in real life but um you don't need to make one in real life you can make a little curled up sleeping dormouse um all by yourself by using our kit so that's something else um to look forward to i knew there was a reason why i said dormouse so now i'm going to zoom in a lot so that you can see what i'm um what i'm doing um and I will show you with the help of a little finished dormouse what is happening next. So um, what I found with this camera is that it doesn't like zooming in when I'm going close to it but what it does it um, it focuses on the back unless I cover everything else on the um, um, so I, I try and do this as, as best as I can but if, if it goes a bit blurry it's not your eyesight it's this camera it keeps ooh, focused on the back and not um, on what's happening here on this piece of um place there so we're making this little nose first that's why we're using the wire and the pink so the beeswax um balm is to stop the um the um is to stop the, the the wool from slipping when you try and wrap it around a wire if you're using a pipe cleaner you don't have that problem but if you're using a wire then you might need a little bit of help to stop it from slipping um, it becomes particularly interesting when we do the tail. So um, the way to use it, the hard shapes are brilliant for this. You just literally run the wire along um, that, that sort of indentation where the heart is. And it just adds a tiny, tiny little bit of layer of, um, of a, um, a, well, we call it a beeswax balm, but it's like a, a greasy layer. It also happens to be extremely lovely to work with and to smell because it is has got a uh, lavender in it and has got um bees beeswax in it obviously so hence the name but it does smell really nice it's very tempting to keep sniffing it so i just put it out of the way for the minute so now i've got a bit of um grip and stickiness on there and um sometimes it's handy to have baby wipes um by your side so that you can just um um, if you don't like the stickiness on your fingers, I just rub it into my hand because they need a lot of um, beeswax balm and um, lavender and oils in them at the moment with all this hand washing. And then I start wrapping my pink wool around the end of the wire and it shouldn't be too hard now because um, the, the beeswax balm gives it a nice little bit of grip. And all I'm doing is I'm building up a layer so that I'm, I have got um, an opportunity in a minute to bend this wire in which I'm doing now so I'm bending this wire in and I've only covered that um, top bit here and now I'm going over it again to um, make the little pink nose and because it doesn't really matter what I'm doing with the rest of it I'm just getting rid of it around oh, the base of the wire I just need the, the, the little nose to be visible um, so there you go. I've got a little a little pink nose there now. Um, I'm not actually too sure if that if that is a good way to see it. I might just try the other camera and then I can zoom in myself. Um, so there, it's got a little pink um, nose here now. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work with um, the main color wool, and um, this is a good opportunity to just show you again how to wrap wool around a wire so I'm using small quantities because the smaller the better and I'm start wrapping this um, really close to the tip of the nose because I want um, only I only want a little tip tip of the nose to be visible and um, harvest mice have actually got quite um, blunt faces they're not as pointy as um, a lot of us think they are so to to wrap the wool I'm going round I do it really close up to the camera now so I've got my wool here and now I'm going to establish it. So now it will just grab, grip into the wool. As soon as I've got a bit, bit of grip there, I'm gonna wrap the wool flat like a ribbon and really close to the wire. So I've got, I have um, an opportunity to tighten it and that's just come off, which is fine. You just start again. And I'm working my way all the way round the wire. You can build up a bit of speed once you know what you're doing but do work in um, in small batches you can tease the wool out a bit as well if you if you um, if it looks a bit fat and work your way round 
and round that wire until you get and I'm just reading the instructions as I'm doing this the whole shape should be about five to six centimeters long so um, I'm, I haven't needle felt it yet I've just literally wrapped my wool along this bit here and I have got a ruler but if you do get our new instructions they all have got a centimeter uh, gauge next to it so this is about a uh, right so I don't want to have I don't want to make this any longer now because I've got the rest of this as a tail and the tails are quite long so I don't want um, to um, to shorten the tail by making the mouse too big and that, that makes it even more out of proportion so I'm still wrapping wool around this until I get to a point where if I want to shape it I'm gonna to have to start um, shaping it um, but I'm still wrapping wool now if you're concerned that you're using too much wool on one mouse then you can always split all of the wool in half because the kit makes two so there I've got a little a little sausage um, on, on a stick at the moment and this is what I'm aiming for okay so um, the, the great thing about having the wire inside is that we don't need to shape the mouse shape to be round because all we need to do is we just need to bend the wire and as soon as you bend the wire you have um, a much you suddenly you can see the little curled up um, body shape of a mouse so um, if anybody needs to catch up with this I'll let you catch up um, and if anybody um, needs to see a stage again I'm going to just go over this nose business again because I've got the other half of the wire so I can make the nose work again so I've got my beeswax heart that comes in the kit just run it in in that um, in that um, dent in the heart to add a little bit of um, stickiness to it. it it's it is very 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 um, subtle the, the, the stickiness it's not um, like um, not not like 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 glue or anything like this Oops, wrong color and I start with a tiny bit of pink the wool will grip straight in into the wire now because I've got um, the beeswax balm on there. I build enough up of the pink so that I have, um, when I bend it in half, I've got a little pink nose there. So I've bent that now in half. And now I use the rest of the wool to just sort of neaten up the nose and go over it again. There. And get rid of the rest of the pink just along the wire um, as you've seen it earlier it will just literally be, um, be covered with um, the brown so I'm not too worried that it's not so neat here because it will just get covered with a brown so I'm going to um, go over this now with a brown just let the little pink of the nose be exposed here and lay layer up about five to six centimeters of the wire with um, a basic layer of the brown and um, I at this point I am NOT needle felting I don't need to needle felt because I'm keeping um, the wrap really nice and whoop, gone out of the camera there sorry about that um, I'm going um, I'm layering up the layers here to make a mouse body and head the head and the body is not that sort of um, um, distinct from each other at this point so I'm just literally building the layers up and, and the, the distinction between the head and the body we can achieve by using the felting needle later so I'm just building up um, this lovely mouse body and head and as I said earlier um, at the moment it looks like a sausage with um, a pink end God, that really did come out wrong in any case, it looks like a harvest mouse that's really um, not very curled. So I'm having the giggles now. Um, okay, think of something else. Have a cup of tea, Steffi. Um, and, and now I'm going to bend it. Okay, so um, that instantly, I can never look at this again in the same way now. Um, okay, okay, let's just look at some um, comments because I'm definitely suppressing lots of giggling here now. Okay. Let's distract myself. No longer looking at the harvest mouse for a minute. Okay, let's just see. Um, uh, oh yes, yeah, Sophie came in. Yeah, that's it. Have a great birthday, Alex. Yes, she's laughing. I just cut my own face. It was scary. Oh yes, I've done that. Um, and I've done that. Um, I 
got a basic wool mat in my dog and cat kit from the doll book excellent have you used it um be really great to know how you got on um i could could have used that for my rainbow pom-poms i made mm, okay i'm not sure what that is um but um yes i don't know what what that is now but in any case i'm sure it's obvious if i had read for, um all the comments um sophie yes sophie was here Woohoo! she does exist um um faith says hi sophie donna says hello sophie i wave to you how silly am i oh well sophie's wave to you how silly is she um oh my god i just waved to sophie pretty sure she couldn't see me <laughs> yes but come on i'm talking to myself in the camera so you know um you can wave she did see you um emma can't laugh at you as i waved to yeah well this is it good morning emma nice to match a face to your comments so that um so the person you just saw i just need to clarify that pamela that was sophie she's the other s of the makers and um so normally sophie and i were sort of joined at the hip but because of whatever is going on at the moment i tend to do more of the um tutorials and the live streams and all that kind of thing whilst whilst um sophie is uh, buckling down um behind the scenes and um keeping the heartbeat going of the makers oh yes um and emma's just commented emma um saying hi pamela that was sophie i'm working from home but will hopefully get to make an appearance once i'm back of course you will um oops sorry thank you for the correction um saving color pinches aside is a great tip thank you pamela um harvest mouse is on my job list nearly done um chandra Oh no, uh, yes, I yes, I I know exactly what you mean. I didn't use scissors. Maybe just a little bit. Um loving that brown. Yes, so that brown I should say, that brown is our dormouse ochre. Um so I will as I've done before, I think I will, if I've got a piece of paper. But what I do is I'll 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 staple all the um the different materials to um a piece of paper and then we'll share it with you on facebook um so that you can see what you actually need if you don't want to get a kit or maybe you've got stuff at home already so i'm getting blown away in the garden oh you're sitting outside it's actually really um a non-windy here um if that's a word but um yeah i i caught the sun a little bit yesterday but I love it, Sunny. Ah, oh, I can't have enough of it. Honestly, I, I, I could so easily live in a country where the sun shines all throughout the year. Um, yeah, I, I do struggle with um the with most of the months in this country. For me, it's just like constant autumn. Um, there's very little distinct spring, and then if we're lucky, if we're very lucky autumn stops for a little bit in the summer um we've been very lucky in terms of the weather but yeah i'm definitely a warm weather person i need sun um donna approximately how fat should the body be okay so we haven't got quite to the fatness of the body yet that comes um comes next but according to my instructions um body about um oh yeah that's right um about that it's a good question. I have no idea. We should maybe put that in there. It probably tells tells me somewhere. I just can't see it. Um, I think it's probably about... Let's just have a look. I'll tell you how fat the body should be because the mouse is here. It's about three centimeters fat. So that's it. I don't know why it doesn't say that here. It might yet say it here and I just can't see it. But we'll we'll go through that in a minute. I'm just going to read more of the comments. Um, so, okay. is it just me that the video is lagging? I, is any, is the video lagging? Because if it's lagging, I have no idea what I can do about it. Um, I do apologize, but I'm technically, technically completely inept and I have no idea how to do this. I might have to ask somebody if that is the case. Mine keeps going spinny disc too. Oh dear. Yes, it happens sometimes. I don't know why. No, I'm getting buffering to some days are great. Other days are buffering. Okay, I, I don't know whether it's our Wi-Fi. I don't know whether it's your Wi-Fi. I don't know whether it's just everybody should be outside in the sunshine, but they're all watching me. Yeah, fuck chance. Um, but at least it's reassuring, Alicia, that it's not you. It's not you. It's just something happens out there. Um, 
the interweb is very busy with all of us on online filters. Yes, well, this is it. Yours keeps stalling too. Okay, I'm going to try one little thing. Um, I've no idea what I'm doing here. Okay, so this could go hideously wrong, but I will... Um, I think there's something about... I'm just going to... This is an experiment. Um, and I, I hope that I'm doing something that will help it. But I might have made it worse. No idea. Okay, tell me if this is better or not. If it is better, I'd be absolutely amazed. If it's worse, then I'll just put it back to what it was before. And then, um, yeah, that's it. Um, mine's a bit dodgy too. I was blaming my sons who's busy decorating for us. I thought he was knocking the connection. <laughs> oh, bless. Um, we're all thinking the same. Hmm, sausages with pink ends. Oh, no, I've just forgotten about it. Oh, Oh, it's right back in my head. Okay. Your rainbow string to wrap the packages. You asked how can people use it. Excellent. Thank you, Alicia. You've saved me. I'm not thinking about sausages with pink ends. Right. There you go. There is your um, harvest mouse. In fact, there, um, there's one that's a little bit skinnier than this one. So I'll continue working on that one for now. So um, you're, you're basically building um, the fatness of the mouse up a little bit more. Um, until it measures about three centimeters. Um, if it if it's slightly less, don't worry because um, we're still working on it. And then the next thing you're going to do is for the first time, you're actually going to use your felting needle and you're um, shaping the bum of the mouth by going straight into it to make it a, a nice round bum. Um, and what you might find now is that you're stabbing the little mouse all over the all over that you um, you need to add a little bit more wool to it because this is where it will have will emerge whether um, the bulk is not big enough and you need to add more so just give it first of all a bit of a stub in its bum I'm literally going in there now like that and and then do it all over to fasten the fibers in so I've got a little tiny little um, harvest mouse on a stick at the moment. I'm going to give you some um, fun facts about harvest mice. So it's the smallest rodent in Europe. Did you know it's smaller than any other rodent? I always thought that a wood mouse was smaller, but apparently harvest mouse is the smallest rodent in Europe. And um, it's the only British animal to have a prehensile tail. So they can actually hold on with their legs and use their tail to get seeds from um, the next plant or they can pull things over so that's what they can do with their tails um, they're, mo they're mostly vegetarian but they also eat um, invertebrates so um, that's basically sort of their, their, their um, um, diets and the Latin name is um, Micromis Minutus no idea Mi Micro I guess I, I'm pronouncing it the Latin way because I'd have, I did actually have Latin in at school in, um, when I was educated in Germany and it is it is the phonetic pronunciation but I guess if you are English you would probably say micromis minutus um, which makes more sense because it's it's tiny and it's my minutus as well minute so it's like mini mini something like that um, and um, they're not all around the UK. I didn't know this. This was this was actually a new fact for me. They're only south of Yorkshire. So anything York, north of Yorkshire, you might not find one of these in your in your natural in their natural habitat. Habitat. However, there are some isolated like isolated records in Scotland and Wales. But otherwise, um, it's sort of all. I don't know what happens between Yorkshire and Scotland because there's quite a lot of UK still. I'm assuming. Um, there's none there, but um, if you're lucky, you have some in Scotland and in Wales, but maybe not so common. And they love fields with high grass because in the high grass, that's where they build their nests and that's their natural habitat. And um, so that's it. So if it's hedgerows or the marshes or fields with high grass, really, um, that's where they want to be. Right. So the next thing is we're doing the legs next. And for this, you need your pink wool there. And you need your felting needle there now you're using your felting needle as a means to make a leg and you need a tiny wisp about that much and you're using your felting needle to um, make 
a pink sausage this time. So you're wrapping the wool around your felting needle um, and once it's established, try and make that um, pink sausage as small as you can. Now you can see as I'm going past the tip of the felting needle, I have to watch my fingers that I don't get um, impaled on the end of the needle. And you should have a maggot size and shape pink wrap on your needle and then you just literally slip that off and it stays that little pink wrap and that is um that's your leg basically and you don't need to do very much with this in terms of felting you can give it a couple of stubs i'm just gonna go a little bit smaller um there um just give it a couple of stubs on your felting mat but um and you can just make one end slightly blunt but leave the other one pointy um so you've got, um, there's, there's the leg that I've got for my um, mouse now. And then you make three more exactly the same way. So use your pink wool, use it very sparingly. You really don't need a lot. They have tiny, tiny little feet. And um, just wrap it around the needle, mind the end of the needle. This is a complete, um, um, what's the word? I wanna say abuse of the needle because when you're not using it for what the purpose is. Um, and then slip it off, stab it, a little bit but keep the other end unstabbed just shape it a tiny bit this is where you have to watch your fingers when you're working with small um, items and I'm using this um, wool mat here that comes now in our um, in our kits that we've recently packed so you want to keep the portions really small you don't have very much pink in the kit and the reason is because we don't want you to make great fat legs for a tiny tiny little harvest mouse so i'm wrapping my third leg here and then take it off and just um stabbing it a little bit turn it round mind your fingers just a tiny bit of stabbing so that it's it's uh, the shape is established and putting it to the one side so I've only got one more to do now tiny amount of that pink and do that again you could use the beeswax balm if you if the you find the uh, needle too slippy but remember that you have to also be able to pull it off and then you have to clean your needle because you don't want beeswax balm on the needle while you're um, stabbing it into wool so um, but if you're really struggling to stop the wool from slipping then um, that's better still than constantly having to adjust it and and maybe making a, a really loose little um, sausage there so now I've got four little legs there for my harvest mouse there it is and um, I've got my little creature here and I am just going to the next page. Oh, no, skipped a page. There we are. So now I'm going to um, um, add the leg onto the side of the mouse. And this will look really weird because I'm not actually making a very good job of it. I'm, I'm literally just getting the leg on. And this is where you've got these wispy ends here at the top. These come quite um, handy and useful now. What I'm going to do is I'm go just going to go a little bit closer up even. So I've got um, the legs here and all I'm doing is stabbing these wispy ends into the side of the uh, mouse's body um, and, they, and they, do, they will look attached. So you've got, you've got um, a leg that literally looks attached to the mouse now. That's exactly what I want. And then I go work my way around other one here at the back just put them into position stabbing them on and they they look as if they've just been attached that's exactly what needs to happen and then do this on the other side as well let's put it here on the side and and then we do this on the back as well so now four legs have been attached almost And um, yes, it, it does look a bit funny, um, especially from the side. But now we, we use um, the wool to cover up the joints. So you can't tell at all anymore that we've just um, stuck these legs into place. So I'm just covering the joint up now. And um, 
making that, that um, pink join completely disappear. This is another opportunity to add a little bit more bulk if you need to. And then I do this on the other side as well. There. Bit of um, the um, ochre color. Such a great color, this wool. It's just perfect for the little um, harvest mouse. It's got sort of a slight ginger tinge to it. And um, yeah, you couldn't you couldn't have found a better wool for it. So um, sometimes what has happened because I've run workshops doing these mice is that the the nose um, this one is quite hidden away, but sometimes it can happen that the nose is poking out loads like that. If that is the case, if if the nose of your harvest mouse pokes out like that, then all you need to do is pull the wire from the other end and make it go in. Okay. So it, it, it sinks more into the head again. Um, and then you can work around the face a little bit and make it less fluffy. And if you need to pull the nose in a bit more, then just give it a, a good old tuck. As long as you've had um, the, the pink wool um, covered around the bend of the wire, it's not gonna slip out. I mean, obviously don't yank it like your life depends on um, because you might just straighten the wire and pull the wire straight out. That would be very annoying. Um, but um, you should be able just to give it a little tuck and again um, the mice look particularly cute if you if you bend them in and you get a much greater sense of, of the shape of the mouse so you can use the, the wire to maintain that shape. So the next thing we're going to do is, is ears and we're wor working in really small quantities so you take a pinch of your um, um, main color wool and um, you take two so make sure they're about the same size and then you can just shape the ears on the felting mat as you go along so just give it a few steps very very shallow steps don't don't um, stab them on too much because you fasten them to the mat and I'm bending in the outside fibers as I'm doing this now this is already stabbing enough for me to pick it off and turn it round and stab it from the other side and um, with um, the wool mat you might, might find that sort of little woolly fibers um, get into your needle felted um, flat piece just pick them out or leave them in there after all they're just wool so if it bothers you pick them out otherwise just leave them in there and I'm making a tiny tiny little ear here they have got really tiny ears but talking about their ears um, apparently they've got extremely good hearing and they can hear um, a noise from seven meters away and if they hear a noise they do two things they either freeze so they just stay completely still or they just drop onto the ground and disappear that way so um to be honest it sounded a little bit like um what spiders to do to me which i thought was a bit of freaky but i don't want to compare a spider to a harvest mouse because there's just no comparison um I, they're so much cuter mice there so um two flat ears with a bit of fluffy ends on it they're quite handy to hold on to if you keep the ends fluffy and they have got very hairy ears so that's great um, that uh, great news to uh, for needle felting ears so I've got two um, ears that are approximately the same and now I'm going to fasten the ears on by flattening the wispy ends there's a bit too much I can just pull some off I sort of flatten the fibers out a little I pull them out a, a little bit oh, we've already got ears and I'm just attaching them by laying them onto the side of the head of the mouse like this can't see that very well because it's the same color ear and I'm just stabbing um, the ear all around into the side of the head and um, once it's fastened on then I dare pinch it a little bit with my finger this is where you have to be careful not to stab yourself so I can um, fasten the ear on and it's actually with a manipulation of the needle that you um, put the ear in the in the right in the right place, whether it's and 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 shape. That's probably the best to see it there. And then you just do it on the other side. It's always um, important that the ear is um, symmetrical in comparison to the other one. Yeah. And just fasten the ear on. And then the best thing is to look at the mouse face on 
and then you can see whether the ears are in the right place, whether they need um, one needs to be coming forward a bit. And if they're in completely the wrong place, don't don't think, oh, that'll do. Just take them off and um, put them in the right place if you need to. If they need to be more forward, you can also just do that by stabbing them more forward. So I'm just adjusting the, the um, this ear has moved forward loads, whereas this ear has stayed at the back. So I'm just moving that forward now as well by just stabbing into the base. That's all I'm doing. I'm just literally stabbing into the base of the ear and I'm, I'm manipulating the um, where the ear is sitting. That's it. And there you are. Now we've got a little blind um, harvest mouse there, still on a stick. It's now about the shape and the size it needs to be. You can work on it more if you want to make it firmer. This is quite, um, quite loosely felted still. Um, and then just add more wool if you've made the bulk too small. Um, and the next exciting thing is to add the eyes into it. And for this, I need to open this little pack and take one pair of eyes out. These are our um, glue-in eyes. There. And um, I think we're using um, the four millimeter. Let's just check on the instructions. Um, they are five millimeter five millimeter glue and eyes four millimeter will work too they do have quite big eyes though so i'm now going to um poke my needle into the place where the eye is going now bearing in mind there is a wire some somewhere inside the head so um just make sure you don't hit straight onto the wire and i'm using my needle to make a hole this is if you haven't got an awl okay so I've got a hole in here now and I'm putting the eye in straight away. I'm not even bothering with the other eye. First of all, I want to put that eye in so that it's in place. Then I'm going to turn the mouse over and do it on the other side as well. So roughly, um, well, not roughly, do it exactly in the same place. And if you're using your felting needle, remember, it will come out at the other end and put then put the eye straight away into that hole that you've just made. And now before you do anything else, just have a look at your mouse. I love this when they come to life. I just think that's so cute. Um, make sure that they're in the right place. These look pretty good. If if they're not in the right place, take them out again. And then all you need to do is use a little bit of glue. We love these glue sticks, by the way, because that when you when if you're only ever using small amounts of glue, I also have a dodgy one that's blocked up, um, which I've promptly taken again. Um, then um, these these glue sticks glue sticks are brilliant. So you can just add a tiny dab of glue behind the eye. If it's if it comes out over the over the um, sides, don't worry because um, this is just a PVA glue. It will dry completely transparent if it's coming out at some point. There it is. Okay, so a little bit of glue, push the eye back in. So do not take the eye out. Just let that thin nozzle of the glue um, go behind the eye. Push it in and then just leave it to dry. And because we're going to the tail now, finish the little mouse off, you don't even have to worry about um, that bit. So um, we're also at the very end, we're adding a little bit of white on its tummy because that's quite um, a distinct mark. So that's yet to come. And um, I'm making the tail next. Um, here we go. So just check if there's any, um, um, just gonna go big again. I'm going to have a zip of my um, tea. It's peppermint tea today again. It's a hot day and that's quite cooling. And remember, Everyone a Maker is our Facebook page. Come and join it um, if you haven't done so yet. Um, and also, if you haven't signed up to our YouTube channel, please sign up. And what's more, tell all your friends about it. Invite them to um, to sign up to our channel. We really need to bring our subscriber numbers up. If, if we've done extremely well. In fact, you've done extremely well to help us do that. But we want to get um, to more and more subscribers because then um, lots and lots of more people get the opportunity to try needle felting and to learn new techniques and, te and um, tutorials and maybe just have a bit of a you know, relaxed time and a bit of a laugh and a bit of a chatter and a bit of a social time. So let's just see um, what else has happened here. Kathy, just watching you this afternoon will make later when it's cooler. Um, 
could we use pipe cleaners for this Steffi? Yes, you can. Um, you can use pipe cleaners. You just have to really wrap things ever so tight because you're starting off with a fatter um, wire. Um, hi, Faith. Yes, Steffi was saying earlier that you could get away with using the pipe cleaners. Yes, thank, thank you, Emma. Um, I'm using a pipe cleaner too. I suspect the internet connection at HQ might be having a slow day. Yes, however, I am actually um, directly uh, plugged in by Ethernet because I didn't want it to, to be dependent on the um, wireless. So I think that does make a difference. But um, yeah, um, Steffi, don't worry about the buffering. It's just something that happens. It's fine when we rerun the video later. Do not worry. Oh, okay. Um, thank you, Donna. Thank you, Emma. I must have missed that bit. Um, no problem, Faith. Chandra. Donna says, Chandra, we had decided this was the Feltolix um, Anon therapy group. Oh, Chandra says, I'm not anonymous. Um, of course you're not, but definitely need therapy. Oh, bless. Um, we all need therapy and Steffi's and Sophie's felting is the therapy. Oh, thank you. You're so kind. I think we also need therapy. Um, um, Steve, is this actually Steve? Is this like a, a female name, Steve? Or are you using your husband's YouTube channel? That's often what happens when people suddenly um, have um, have maybe more recognize, recognizable male names. It's usually that they use their husband's YouTube channel, which I think is hilarious because I used to do all of that when I had when I had tiny little children for me email address. Um, Facebook didn't even exist. I was just just lucky to get up in the morning and function. I didn't even think about doing anything um, technically related or anything like this. It was just like, oh, I'm still awake and alive at the end of the day. Um, and I remember, and because I've got four children and two of them, my first two, they're so close together. And of course, um, nobody can really prepare you for what hits you when um, when you've got children. I remember that um, there's, there's just over a year between number one and number two. And I would um, push them around in town. And I had complete strange people come up to me and they say, it will get better, love. And I thought, oh my God, I must look like absolutely terrible. <laughs> like I can't cope or anything like this. And um, yes, I, I think... Um, yeah um how did we come to talk about this oh yes um steve are you are you a steve um um but anyway you did latin at school too um yes i never quite understood why i had latin at school it was just it's just i, I was never going to use it for anything i'm interested in languages but i like them when they're actually alive and you can use them rather than when they're dead and um yeah you have to look for meaning in them um i do however remember my first latin um, um, oh yes, my first Latin sentence was Gallus cantat and that means the cockerel crows so there you go it's um, a really important phrase to know <laughs> if ever I go in a time machine and um, visit the Romans again then at least I can tell them that their cockerel has just crowed um, all body parts and things are Latin in medicine yes I know that so basically that's really great if you're going into the medical um, profession I, I knew at a very early age that I w would be far too squeamish to do anything like this so it um, yeah it didn't um, really sit with me right so um, how is the buffering nobody's telling me if I'm if I'm worse or better now um, I might be nobody might see anything now maybe I should put it back to where it was um, Let's just see if I can. Maybe it needs to be. I'm going. I'm going above it now and see what happens. Um, yeah, let's just see what happens. Right, harvest mouse. Next, next goes. So now we're doing the tail. I'm just pretending that you can all see me and that I'm not buffering at all. Um, I'm going close again. Right. So. Um, I am going to have um, the exposed wire here, as you know, and um, just going to the page where I need to be, which is um, oh yes. Before we get to um, the, the the tail, actually, I, I just remembered. Um, I said mentioned earlier we need to give him a white tummy, so that's quite nice to also um, take care of the join of the legs underneath and they have got um, a very distinct white tummy so don't be too sparingly with um, the wool there I'm just stabbing that in there now okay 
So I'm just literally adding the white under the tummy of that little um, harvest mouse. There we go. And you can uh, you can um, you can add quite a bit because that's quite um, a distinct feature on on the harvest mouse. So just felt it on. That's it. There we are. And then um, we're going to the tail. Now the tail, um, the color of the tail of on a harvest mouse is sort of a, a gray and pink mix. So for this you're using your grey wool, which is in the pack, and you're using a little bit of the pink wool, which is also in the pack, um, and you're just mixing that by laying some top of each other. It's definitely more grey heavy than pink heavy, and mix it so that it becomes... Um, it's it's not that the colour is pink, it's just that the, the, the colour of the tail is greyish, but then of course the pink flesh sort of um, shines through. And for this, definitely, definitely use your um, beeswax balm heart. So again, just do the end first because we're, we're making the end of the tail exactly how we did the nose, but even, even more delicate. And so you start by wrapping a little bit of this grey wool around the end, just enough so that it's covered and then you bend it in because you don't want this to be too um, fat. So it's got a fat tail end. And um, and then just wrap the wool around it. And just go all the way as far as you can around the tail. If you don't have enough wool to reach the top of it, don't worry. We can um, always go over it again. Just remember which way you wrapped it. So there, and then add a little bit more your pink grey mix again if you need to use the beeswax balm just to get a grip let's do that if it only was so easy um, to get a grip by just using a bit of beeswax balm that'd be the most amazing I'd be making lots of money on just bill buying um, beeswax balm if anybody ever says to you come on get a grip <laughs> and you just use beeswax balm okay this is going silly now anyway there we go so that's the tail. Now the tail um, is actually what you're doing now is you're using your beeswax balm and you're scraping a little bit of the beeswax balm off with your fingernail. So you want a larger, you just rub it between your fingers. So you've got, um, you can definitely feel you've got a thin layer of beeswax balm on there. And then in the direction of how you've wrapped this, you're going to go round this tail and stroking that beeswax balm off on the tail so you're tightening the tail you might untighten it at some in some places so you have to just tighten it again and you're basically wrapping that greasy um, residue that's on your finger you might have to have a second go on this um, and put it around the tail to flatten all the fibers down so you're making it into almost like a um, a, a non-fluffy um, kind of feature now. There. It's quite. Um, you have. You really have to wrap it quite tightly, and don't worry if you're unwrapping it a little bit. At at some point, you will get the grip again to make it tight. So you're you're making this a lot tighter around the mouse now. And, um, and that way you've got an, a nice thin tail, which is what they need, but it's also not furry. Um, if, the tail, um, if the tail end is too long, I think it, uh, you won't notice it because you can act actually bend it and, and, and therefore the tail will appear um, smaller anyway. And then just as a very final um, bit, if you feel the mouse needs fattening up a little bit more or you need to put a join around his back where the tail has joined, then just needle felt a little bit of wool, sort of almost reaching um, just into the beginning of that tail where it um, where it comes out of the body, and um, and that gives it more of a um, a look like like it's not just stuck on there. It actually is part of the whole mouse. Sorry, I shouldn't have bent that yet. It's 
in the way and um, and then you've basically made your little harvest mouse how is everybody doing with um, their um, with their live streams now I haven't seen any um, I'm only I'm only asking because I've actually lost myself on um, watching now so I'm, I'm just going to have a, a look if I can and um, get back into it yeah I, I, I was stuck on my YouTube um, because I've got two screens that I'm looking on one where I can see myself um, for real in real life and then one where it's what you see basically so I oh so you're saying now the buffering is gone um, okay no idea if that was what I did at first or later on anyway I'm just gonna go big again so you can see me better and um, so I've got my little harvest mouse it's all ready that's the one um, I um, we made together today um, you can put the legs in more of a natural position just by by stabbing into the base of the legs that will sort of pull them one way or the other whichever you want them to be pulled um, and they do have really tiny tiny little legs so you're not going to um, even if you've got tiny little stumps there, that's still better than having great long legs. So you can always shorten the legs if they're too, too long. Um, but don't worry if they, if they, if you think they're too short. And if you need to build up a little bit more bulk, then you still can do that. I've still got all of this wool left to make a second one, and I'm not going to uh, use all of this. And then there's still pink and um, grey left here as well, and white. So there's plenty of wool there to make a second one. And um, what else um, do can I tell you about? So they're very active climbers, as you can imagine, because they they can um, climb up high. Um, sometimes they hang on their tails to um, say hello to their friends. So I think that's really sweet that they they do that. You could even put them in a pose with a heart shape tail like this, and then let them say hello to each other like that. And, um, and sometimes they intertwine the tails as well. And they feed mainly around dusk and dawn. And um, their most popular breeding time is between May and October, um, but mostly in August. And they have up to three litters a year. Um, and um, they're, 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 they're born naked, as most uh, rodents are. And at 16 days, only 16 days, they leave the nest. Not like humans where they maybe never leave. Definitely not after 16 days, <laughs> imagine that. But then they also only live about 18 months, so that maybe isn't. And they weigh about four to six grams. So let's just see, I think I think it's almost an authentic um, um, mouse. Yeah, you probably find that these are about, um, about four to six grams in weight. Um, and um, they're the size that they're meant to be as well. So tiny, um, about 50 to 70 millimeters or five to seven um, centimeters. Let's just measure this one. Yeah, that one is, well, from, if you we measure from tip, from nose end to tail end, um, not end, a beginning of tail, it'll be about um, five or six um, centimeters. So um, pretty authentic little harvest mouse, not just there for the harvest, but also for any time of the year and they're really easy to make and if you like that kind of um, principle of using a wire to wrap then you might also like um, the harvest um, the uh, dormouse which um, we sell in a kit as well that also makes two and I'm just gonna add these to my um, flower arrangement here all these harvest mice in all kinds of different poses and positions and um, I've got nice and um, smooth hands now from the beeswax balm. You can buy the beeswax balm. We sell it either in a tin version there. Um, so if you if you like using that dent in the heart, then it's slightly harder with a tin, but you can scrape bits out and just distribute them by finger onto the wire. Or you get for the same amount of money, you get um, three hearts. This is actually really hard to see. There, can you see now? three hearts in there so that's what we what you get in the kit as well and then um, like I said we've used the 22 gauge um, paper covered um, wire you get 25 in there that makes um, 50 dormice if you need to know that 
you only need about five gram of this lovely wool and the minimum is 50 grams that we sell so you can um, match the 50 dormice by using um, the wool um, that we sell and then you just need wisps of pink and white and gray and that's basically it really really easy oh yes and the eyes um, the five five millimeter glue in eyes which we absolutely love these eyes so like I said before if you're watching live tomorrow I'm going to do the posable mice which again is a principle of wrapping wire but with a little wire armature and I'm really really looking forward to that it's seven o'clock and you have to go over to the creative craft um, Facebook page for that one if you're watching this any time later after the um, I don't even know what date it is today it's either the 27th or the 28th of May I'm completely clueless um, if you're watching this after that date then um, obviously you you can watch it still on their Facebook page because the videos stay on there as well but you might have to scroll down and and, and find it on there and um, oh yeah the only other thing I have to share with you because I'm so excited about it I actually finished um, the little um, forget-me-not fairy and look she's got little legs so this one has got legs and she's got wings wings made from Angelina fiber so if you don't know about our fairy boxes that's one of our subscription boxes and you get everything to make a fairy like that in the subscription box and this starts on the 1st of June and I'm very excited because on the 1st of the month I will be unpacking um, the um, different subscription boxes that we do including the makers box which of course you get this fabulous butterfly and just to show you a time um, not a time a size comparison if you see the fairy next to it in fact these two look really lovely with each other next to each other um, it's a really big picture of a butterfly and that's going to be out from the 1st of June but if you um, haven't decided yet or you you dithering whether you should do the fawn definitely go for it because you've only got another few days left to make the fawn um, that's sitting over there and we've seen some amazing fawns being made by so many of you and it's absolutely lovely that you share this with us um, it's it's just so heartwarming to see them so thank you so much for um, for yeah just showing them to us it's um, I always think it takes courage to uh, to share your mix because we're always vulnerable when we're sharing something that means a lot to us but you can feel totally safe with us because we absolutely love them and we love you all too so that's um the end of this live stream i'm just going to have a quick look what um, people have been saying in case there's some practical questions that i can answer while i'm still here um uh so can't wait for the new mugs. I know Emma, when are the new mugs coming? Everyone a maker. Um, that's the everyone a maker fa Facebook group. Um, I do like a bit of peppermint tea, but my favorite is a nice morning cup of lemon and ginger. Oh, that's nice. I haven't had lemon and ginger, but I think the thing is with lemon and ginger, once you drink proper lemon and ginger, you never want to go back to the tea. But somebody shared with me, um, or oh, it wasn't with me personally, but I saw it on Facebook, that you can actually make tea out of elderflower. And I want, really want to try that because there's so much elderflower out there and I don't want to make elderflower cordial because the amount of sugar that goes into it, it's absolutely insane. So I might make it, but I'd never drink it. Um, no problems with connection since you did whatever you did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I did what I did, but then I actually undid what I did. So if it's still okay, I have no idea what happened. I just had to refresh my screen and I was better. Um, oh, I see. So Diane, you're on, on Steve's account. It's your husband. Okay. I get it now because I've, I've definitely seen you as, as you on the um, account as well. Um, Better and then Alicia says no buffering has gone for me mine is better says um, Chandra and um, Pauline see you see you are a technical genius <clears throat> yes of course um, starting to buffer again now oh you see now because it was starting to buffer again I actually undid what I did so what I'm going to do is for I'm going to um, do what I did originally and then um, hopefully tomorrow no, I'm not using this tomorrow, but whenever I'm using this again, um, it um, it hopefully will be better. So, okay, I have, oh, did I even go lower? I think I went lower. Okay, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but trust me, I, I know what I'm doing. Well, 
I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it anyway. Right. Um, switch the switch. I've, I've switched the switch, Chandra. I'm, we're all right. Yeah. Um, okay, great. I know why it was buffering now. Um, so I've just done what I did earlier to stop the buffering um, and, um, and, and, and because I put it back again to what it originally was. But it sounds like I needed to do what I did first time around. I'm confusing myself here. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this and I shall be getting ready to um, make these mice and um, I might dress them up a bit but there's going to be something extra that I haven't even told Emma about it yet because Emma has given me an idea but I have had an extra idea that I haven't told Emma yet so um, hopefully you will see this tomorrow there's going to be a prize to be won again and we um, we're hopefully going to be able to give a I've got a fluff up my nose again going to be able to give a, um, a special discount code out again if you're watching tomorrow so there might be some bargains to be be had in um, um, as well and I think that's all I've got to say today so share your mice with us if you've made them come and post um, them on everyone a maker we've also got a happy place forum on our website if you're not on Facebook you can message us directly and share uh, via our website and um, hope to see you all very, very soon. If not tomorrow, then another time. And um, just stay safe and stay in that happy place. And um, yeah, we'll see you very, very soon. Bye.